Well, the title of today's message is To Be Blessed by the Best. And uh, you might wonder what in the world that has to do with all the stuff you're going through in this crazy time, but I think it has a... I think it has a lot to say about the world we're living in. Amen? Amen. Too blessed by the best to even be depressed is what's on the sign out there. Mm -hmm. Not even going to be stressed. But listen, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to have the opportunity to be stressed every single day. You're going to have the opportunity to be depressed every single day. Every, every time the enemy presents something, you have a choice. Either you're going to believe the Word of God, or you're going to believe the lies of the enemy. Amen. Right now, his, he, he is raging his head. He, think, he I almost in my spirit this morning, just think about what he was like when the day he killed Jesus. I bet you he was thinking he was just all that and a bag of chips. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he, he was happy, right? <laughs> I bet he wasn't so happy about a day or so later. I bet not. <laughs> when G, you know, I, I'm just not a politically correct preacher. I'm about to give up on the whole idea of it. I've tried to behave over the years. but uh, Just think of, Matt, when, I, when I read the Word, and you know, how many you know God talks to you the way you'll understand? Mm -hmm. And I'm just a good old hillbilly, so he, he talks to me that way. And can you imagine Jesus going out? I bet he was just whipping the tar out of them. I can just see him down. He, they said he made a show of them openly. Do you know what that means? That means he called an audience over and said, Hey, everybody come watch this beat down. <laughs> That's what he did. He made a show. Of, and then he said he triumphed. How many when you triumph over somebody, they ain't getting back up? They tagged out. They say, I want no more. I forever submit to you, just don't hit me again. Amen. And that is what Jesus did to darkness the day he went down to hell. Amen. It said he made a show of them openly. I got a little ring. He says he made a show of them openly. Amen. And how many today, he's acting like he has really whipped something again, if you were to believe what everybody was saying in the world around you. Mm -hmm. But I came to remind you that Jesus already made a show of him openly and he doesn't have to do it again. Amen. Right. But you do have to open your mouth. Mm -hmm. You have all the authority in Christ waiting for you to speak. See, you're, you're, but what happens when we get depressed when we let the cares of this world choke the life out of us, yeah. we stop looking at all the things God's done for us and is doing for us. Amen. How many woke up this morning and is still sucking air? Amen. Amen. That's right. Well, you're better than everybody in the cemetery. How many here had a house over your head? Amen. Mm -hmm. How many had a bed? Amen. How many had food? Amen. How many had somebody that cared if you got up today? Amen then guess what? You're a lot better. How many here have discovered that Jesus loved you? Amen. How many have embraced that love? Amen. How many have found Him to be faithful to His Word? Amen. If you haven't, I challenge you this morning to try Him. Right. It will be life-changing. You will discover things that will blow your mind. And I'm not talking about legalistically trying him. I'm just about saying, I'm talking about, see, when you really try Jesus, you give up all your rights. If you want him to adopt you, you've got to give up all your rights. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they want him to try it out. How many know he ain't really, he ain't really your daddy until mm -hmm. you give up all the rights? Mm -hmm. Come on, I'm preaching this. That's pretty good, Holy Ghost. Amen. So you have to give up all your rights. What happens is a lot of times... The Lord keeps trying to hold on to us. And we keep trying to hold on to things and not give them all to God, right? Mm -hmm. right? But if you want to really be blessed, how many here finally got tired of all the... Listen, I, I've seen for years in the church world, it's okay. If you're listening online, just listen up if you find yourself there. It's a common place where people try to hold on to part of their rights and try to serve God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for when you see people that are truly blessed, 
The one common thing you'll figure out is they gave, they just, they got sick of the ping pong and they finally gave up all their rights and they fully surrendered to God. Amen. And said, God, come whatever may, I'm going to serve you. Good, bad, indifferent, I'm going to serve you, I'm going to do your word, and I'm going to trust you. Well, guess what? The enemy may try to bring some bad, but God's good always wins and overcomes. Amen. Always. We're going to look at the, a verse this morning, our key verse. It says, The blessings of the Lord maketh one rich, and add no sorrow to it. So, if you will serve God this morning, there is no doubt that He's good. Now listen, when I say rich, most people think of what? Money. 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 <laughs> you know. How many know that being rich is a lot more than money? Yeah. Listen, there are things you can't even put a price on. My peace is something I can't is, is that is above money. The joy from the Holy Ghost is above money. The Holy Spirit that constrains me from doing something stupid is above money. You know, I am still human, and there's times whenever I, the, the enemy may get my goat, and, and listen, I, I'm thankful that I'm full enough of the Holy Ghost now. He says, hold on, stupid. <laughs> constrains. The love of God constrains you. It means it stops you midway, and it goes, what are you doing, stupid? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look up the verse that's in there. Mm -hmm. Come on, are you with me this morning? That it will make you rich. So, if the blessings of the Lord make you rich, you say, well, Pastor, COVID-19 is everywhere. Everybody's doing all this stuff. I would say, well, who came to steal, kill, and destroy? John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Right? right? So, if somebody's trying to bring you sorrow, where is it coming from? The pits of hell. Well, guess what Jesus did? What were we talking about? He made a show of him openly, Amen. triumphing over him. Amen. So, how are you going to enforce your riches? Listen, when the bank robbers show up to steal your riches, do you just go, here you go? <laughs> if you got an M16 in your hand and they show up with a water gun and you still give in, that makes you stupid. Yeah. Because that's what it's like when the enemy should. Listen, I'm not belittling you. I, I, I gave, and there was a different seasons in my life. I gave the enemy more than a fair share and thought he had more power than what he had. But when I learned who I was in Christ, what authority I had in Christ, my whole life changed. And so... When you start enforcing it, so the enemies come up with a whole load of sorrow and try to dump it in every believer's lap and say, here you go, I'm bringing you sorrow, swallow it, hook, line, and sinker. I can't do everything about every believer, but I can come talk to you this morning. And I can tell you, you need to return that mess to cinder. Amen. Because the blessings of the Lord make one rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. Does that not, but sorrow does try to come. Listen, the Bible says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. There's times you're going to have heartbreak. But I'm so thankful that God, the blessings of God come in and start comforting you. Amen. Start restoring you if you let it. Amen. Come on, are you with me? Amen. But man, you don't take the sorrow. Right now, if listen, if I didn't have Jesus, I would be one of the, I think I'd be one of them crazy prepper guys hiding in the woods somewhere. You know, I, I'd be so far away from everybody, I'd have me a hole dug down the ground, a bunker, you know. Have enough peanut butter and stuff for the last 12 years. You know, I, I, you ain't going to get me. I mean, where would you have to stop if you didn't have any faith in God? I don't see a way out of it unless it's, if, I, if I didn't believe that God is who He says He was and could do what He said He could do, I'd be scared to death. And I'm not knocking those that are. Yeah. They need some hope. They need some joy. And they're only going to get it if it comes from somebody that has it. Amen. And you can't, that you can't give someone you're belittling somebody. 
Ain't be little in, in life and it's somebody ain't never helped no one. But you can't smile and say, oh, the blessings of God. They make us one rich and add no sorrow. Well, what's that mean? I'm like, but don't you realize what we're living in? Well, yeah, I do. Man, let me tell you about my God. He made a show openly. Well, yeah, but that was then. Well, what about now? You know, when he, Jesus don't have to whip him twice. They don't want no more. They got all they wanted that day. They, they, they said, take it all. Here's the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Just get out of here. I, I love it when that, that verse in Colossians 2.15 where it says he made a show of them openly. I really can see that. Everybody come over here. Everybody come watch. All you angelic hosts. All you fallen angels. Come over here. We've got the cage match of the century. We've got Jesus Christ. And we've got Satan right here, right now. They're going to go head to head. And Satan's going to, he has access to all of his demons. They can come in and help whenever they want. It's a free for all with Jesus. It's going to be a great spectacle. Come and watch the destruction. We've killed him once and we're going to destroy him forever. And Jesus said, y'all come on over here. I got something I want to show you. Can you imagine their face when he let loose? They thought of him as a lamb and all of a sudden they got the lion. He was a lamb on the cross, but I guarantee you he was a lion in the pits of hell. He was a lamb sacrificed for us. that forever paid the price for us when we repent for, from our sins. And the blood covered it. Amen. But when I guarantee you, <laughs> by the Spirit of God, they didn't get the lamb in hell. They got the lion. Mm -hmm. And the lion showed up. Everybody knows Pastor goes like I like I like lions. When you get a little spiritual insight, I believe the lion showed up. Woo! <laughs> and they didn't want no more. Well, listen. Everybody's cowering today. They need to see the lion show up, and it's only going to come through you and me. But it's got to start when it starts in your life. Amen. But you've got to believe that the blessings of God make us one rich and add no sorrow. Now listen, I'm not going to tell you that the enemy's not going to try to come and put a whole plate full of sorrow on you. He will do his level best. That's his job, right? I mean, a lot of times when we hear these messages, we're like, Whoa, oh, I'm so blessed. Sorrow has no place. And then the enemy comes and dumps a whole plate of sorrow on you. Oh, I've got sorrow. Where did this come from? <laughs> well, listen. You're going to, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Kind of still works today. I, I take every thought captive that exalts itself above the mind of Christ. I'm a man of God. You will believe some of the stupid thoughts he tries to fire in my head. How do you know it wasn't yours? Well, I wasn't thinking all it didn't line up with the Word of God, and I didn't keep it. But if, you're, if, if an enemy can fire any thought he wants in your head all day long without you taking it captive, he can get you to believe whatever he wants and he steals every blessing and he fills you full of sorrow. Yep. I ain't telling you that to beat you up. I'm telling you that so you can start taking authority over that you've got in Christ and you can whip that thing. Amen. Come on, are you hearing me? How many like to whip that thing? Amen. How many believe you already got the authority to whip it? Amen. How many believe that Jesus did that on a cross so that you could be free? Yes, amen. amen. The blessings of the I, I was he spoke it to me early in the week and he just kept on giving me stuff. He said, Listen, you need to remind him the blessings of the Lord maketh one rich, and I had no sorrow. Uh, he said, because the enemy has came with a whole truckload of sorrow in the world around them, and he's trying to drown them in sorrow. And they need to focus on the blessings. Philippians 4 8 says, think on these things. Or things are lovely, or things are pure, or things are just, there be any virtue, if there be any praise. Think on these things. What are you supposed to think on? Those things. What have you been thinking on? None of those things. Well, come on. Do you know how you get the blessings get sold from you? You stop thinking on the blessings. You start taking for granted. Listen, I've been serving God a long time. I have a blessed life. Sometimes I, I got to pinch myself, and sometimes the enemy tries to even make me feel guilty because my life's so blessed anymore. I'm being honest. 
Anybody else get that way sometimes? No, I mean, you're just so blessed sometimes you feel guilty. I'm not trying to rub it in. I mean, God's taking me through places with it. <coughs> but if you're not careful, you'll quickly forget just how blessed you are. I look at my kids sometimes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell them some, sometimes I think that they're spoiled rotten. And God said, no, they're just blessed. <laughs> I mean, they're not bad kids, but when I, when I compare what I had and what they had, mm -hmm. they're not even in the same boat. I got to go to Pizza Hut once a year mm -hmm. on my birthday. It's the only time we ate out. That church could go and do other things. I, I just grew up poor. I started working when I was Isaiah's age so I could get out of some of them clothes I was in. You know? My kids got clothes. They got computers. They even got go-karts. I mean, I didn't pay full price. They gave her blessings from God. I had to work on them. But they, they just got everything. You know? And, and when they asked for God, what was that like? Oh, Sissy, which I forgot mine this morning, as you all can, hopefully you can start to tell by now, I've been hard at it for months and months now on my diet, working out, trying to get back into shape. I'm down almost 60 pounds. And, oh, wow. uh, Good job. You know, but Sissy, she said, out of nowhere, she said, Daddy, I want one of those fitness trackers to track my steps. And if you've ever priced those things, they're expensive. Mm -hmm. I said, well, well, let's just pray about it, honey. Well, the next day I found a deal. They were $7 a piece, regular 50-something. Mm -hmm. And so she prayed, and God provided, and they usually have them on. But that's the blessings of the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. He doesn't always put the hard cash in your hand, but he gives you the ability of riches and wealth. When you go to Acts chapter 2, when it says they'll be filled with the Spirit of God, that dunamis power, when you go to Thayer's, one of the definitions of that is to have the ability to access riches and wealth. Now, do you have to have it? No, but you have the access of it because your daddy owns a cattle on a thousand hills, right? Mm -hmm. Now, listen, some of you may be shutting me off because you haven't ever heard of this, but listen, don't shut me off. I encourage you to start trying it. Amen. One of the ways you can do that is something that's really unpopular today, and I already took the offering, <laughs> is to start paying your tithes Amen. and offerings. Every time anybody's come to me with financial problems in love, the first thing I've asked them usually are, are you paying your tithes? And most of the time they're not. And so then most of the time, not, all, not most of the time, then I, so I encourage, all the time I encourage them to pay. And I, I give, try to give them some knowledge because most people have been browbeat. Mm -hmm. And you can't do it out of a legalistic heart. You've got to do it because you want to because you love God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so... And I've tried to live in such a way and teach in such a way that has encouraged people to come up in that area. Amen. And, I, I've, I've, and I've tried to lead the way in that area in the church. And so this morning, if you're wanting more of the blessings of God, I'm going to ask you, I didn't plan to say in my notes, are you paying your tithes or are you doing your offerings? Because it's the first thing that God says, try me and see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour out the blessing you can't contain, Malachi chapter 3. But then in the next part of that verse, it says that he will give the devourer for your sake and your seed will come to fruition. Right now, the devourer has showed up. Amen. This COVID-19 is a devourer from the pits of hell. If you're a faithful tithe payer, I know this ain't going to be popular. I'm going to get stuff from online. But if you're a faithful tithe payer, if you're in the church and you've sowed that in, you have a biblical principle that the devourer, the, that, the, the, <laughs> that God is going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen. And that your seed will come to fruition. He didn't say that he wouldn't try to mess, that you wouldn't have. Listen, how many know we're all in the world where this thing is operating? But how it's affecting us is different for the ones that are experiencing the blessings of God. And the great news is, is that He gives to every man liberally that asks. All you've got to do is ask if you haven't experienced it and get in and you'll get it too. Amen. Amen. There's my big sign. You like that? <laughs> But listen, I understand even myself, unfortunately they're making so many laws and I'm trying to be above reproach and still, by the way, there's all kinds of people saying, 
I'm going to go online. I'm already out there that because we're having church, I'm breaking the law and I'm breaking the word of God. Listen, when Peter and John got thrown in jail, they told them not to be preaching. And what did they do as soon as they got out? They went back to preach. And you, I can show you a million times in a word, I ain't, I ain't part of the message today, where, listen, I obey every law of the land here. I go above and beyond as pastor. But when you, and, and I can't speak for other pastors and how they're interpreted. All I can speak is for how God spoke to me. I don't, and I don't push my, I haven't pushed my convictions off on one member here at the church. Right. Loved them and supported them. Mm -hmm. But for me, God's word is over that. Amen. Someone says, you can preach anywhere. Yes, I can. I can preach anywhere. But I can't assemble just anywhere. Right. Yeah. And he told me not to forsake it. So we're going to be here this morning. And as we come together, if you're online, I believe you can receive. But as I've, as I've had to stay up with the stupid news to see how it's affecting <laughs> us, it really tries to clutter my mind and my spirit. How about you? How many have just about had enough? The other day, I'll be honest, I, I, I bite my tongue because I want to say stuff and it's not going to be edifying, right? And you all know, Pastor, I preach on that, so luckily, not luckily, the, the Holy Ghost constrains me and says, don't say that, stupid. <laughs> I can't tell you how many posts I wrote just to erase and not said nothing. I wanted to say, I am sick and tired of COVID-19 and I've never even been affected. Amen. But anyhow, the truth is, I, I was done with it the first month we were had it, and then the second month, and now we're going on the third month. But that doesn't affect who God is for me. Amen. And if I concentrate on all the sorrow He's bringing, I'm going to drown in sorrow. Mm -hmm. But if I start thinking about the blessings of God, I'm going to start getting back in my right mind. The Bible says, let the peace of God rule your heart and mind, right? How many like peace? Anybody in here? I love peace. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> Listen, it says, let it rule your heart. How many have felt as you've been reading? Listen, I'm going to tell you, this thing is demonic. I'm not going to get popular about this message. but So when you start reading and processing all of it, I can promise you it's not an if, and, or a but. It starts stealing your peace. And the deeper you go into trying to figure it out, the more deeper you go down the rabbit hole. I'm going to tell you, you need to stay just enough to stay informed without going down the rabbit hole. And you need to start be thinking on the things of God. Because the deeper you go down, the deeper it's going to swallow you, I can guarantee you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our next verse, look, I'm almost done. Anybody believe that? <laughs> knew that was good. <laughs> Second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.6 He says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance. When you're in remembrance, what are you doing? You're remembering something, a blessing of God, that God did something in your life, right? Yes. Now when was the last time you started thinking? Listen, how many of you got filled with the Holy Ghost? Amen. How many remember when hands were laid on you, you got filled? I remember the first time God healed you, uh, God used you to move in some type of healing. Amen. How many of you remember the first time God used you to bring salvation to someone? Amen. How many of you remember the first time that God used you just to, the anointing breaks the yoke and you prayed for someone? Amen. Now see, as I speak that this morning, something starts stirring inside you, doesn't it? Now listen, the Bible says lay hands on yourself and stir up the gifts of God. Listen, instead of concentrating on all the trash, you're going to have to lay hands on your belly and stir up the gifts of God. Say, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you've caused me to operate in the, you know, in those gifts. And I'm not going to sit there and list all my gifts because if you don't know them by now, then you, I know you don't want to me tell them for everybody. <laughs> I probably came across wrong, but it meant it well. <laughs> but listen, you need to stir up your gifts, don't you? Amen. How many know love, joy, and peace are some good fruits of the Spirit you can start with? Amen. Lord, I thank you I stir up the gift of peace. I thank you I stir up the gift of joy. Ha, ha, ha. Well, we had a fun time last week, didn't we? Amen. Woo, glory. <laughs> like an hour and a half, another but Holy Ghost laughter. 
Nobody could stop. We can, we can have that again today. You know what you do? You put your hand on your belly and you say, Lord, I, I stir up. I remember being filled. Go ahead. Before. I start the gift of joy that was put in me last week. What's what happens? Ha, 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 ha. Some of you did it. See, the ones that did it, you got it. Do you see how that worked? It's not a theory. It's not a theory, is it? If you want to get rid of all the sorrow, <laughs> I got it coming like a wave. <laughs> Faith train. <laughs> Listen, we've got the spirit of the Holy Ghost. We got the best weapons in the world. We've got a king that already made a show of him openly. Sit up, quit trying to go over there with a water gun when you got a Mac 10, man. <laughs> Stir up the gifts of God that are in you. Amen. Nobody said you had to fight fair. <laughs> it's a it's a loaded fight. Just go ahead and accept it. I read the end of the book. We win. Amen. Amen. But right now, the enemy is coming in with a flood of sorrow. And we need to rise up with a spirit of joy and peace. How do we do that? Taking every thought captive that exalts itself above the mind of Christ. Thinking on the things of God. Or remembering some of the things He's already done for you. Starting to count your blessings. And then stirring up those gifts of God that He's put within you. If you'll stir them up, you'll be shocked at what starts happening. <laughs> you'll start getting some funny looks. They already think we're peculiar. Amen. But listen, I don't, I don't care. I'm not doing it to be peculiar, but I refuse to give in to this thing that came to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. I'm not saying that there's not some truth in it, but let me tell you, cancer's true too, but I don't bother it. Right. I'm not trying to be rude, but, I, you know, I've had all kinds of things that have been true that the doctor brought to me. I didn't deny they were true, but it also didn't deny that God's Word was true. Amen. And I walked them out. <laughs> and I'm winning. Amen. And that's what we need to do. Amen? Amen. Amen? Listen, either you believe the whole book or you might as well take it and throw the thing away. Amen. I know, I'm a man... Maybe we need to turn off comments on this video. <laughs> so, oh <laughs> the blessings of hope, they make us more rich. And they add no sorrow. There's no if, there's no and, and there's no but. Amen. And you don't need to accept one either. Amen. And when the enemy tries to stick his butt in there, you say, get out of my face. Amen. <laughs> I can't wait to see what Brother Patrick says. <laughs> Woo! Glory. See, and all I did was come in here and stir up the memories and stir up the gifts of God. And your whole atmosphere changed. And your whole, your, your whole mind changed. Your whole spirit man changed. Amen. Here's the great news. You don't have to wait for me to be here to do it. Amen. You can do it anywhere, anytime. Amen. And but you need to recognize when sorrow is coming, and you're going to have to cut that off. Yes. Amen. If you're not strong enough you, to be around them people, you're just going to have to remove yourself from the room. Mm -hmm. If you can't take authority over what they're yapping about, just move on because it ain't worth your peace and joy. Amen. Amen. Nobody said to argue with them. Proverbs has a lot to say about not arguing with fools. <laughs> oh, Lord. I really.
really don't want to be YouTube famous over this message. <laughs> <laughs> But in all honesty, I bet I've chosen my words carefully because, and for those that don't know me, it's not that I don't care about people that have it. It's not that I'm not aware that people are dying, and I'm definitely not callous. And I'm praying for them. I care about it, and I minister to them any way I can. And if you're not dealing with it well, you can reach out to me anytime. I'll talk to you. I'll be there for you. I'll encourage you. But the tools that I'm giving right now to a body will break through anything the enemy's throwing at you during this time. Amen. And it may even be tools you've used before and you're familiar with, but you know, I have a lot of tools at home. And if I don't use them all the time, sometimes I gotta go back and try to figure I gotta remember how I properly use that thing. Amen. And I gotta re educate myself a little bit. <laughs> and maybe it's been a little while since you used some of these things. Maybe you need to go back and start stirring it up. Amen. Amen. Lay your hands on there. Woo, glory. Ha, ha, ha. Greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. Guess what? That even means COVID-19. Amen. Amen. Am I telling you to go out and lick light poles? No. <laughs> Don't be stupid. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Well, Pastor, you ain't wearing a mask and you're not doing this. Yeah, because all I see is fear that comes when you start down that rabbit right. hole. Amen. I'm not, listen, I know there's people here that wear them. And I, I'm not, listen, I'm not blaming you. If that make, brings you comfort and you're still walking with the Lord, that's between you and God. Right now, I'm speaking as pastor, okay? I'm speaking for me as a man. Amen. I'm not telling you that you have to do this. Do we understand the difference? I'm not, I probably shouldn't even open up about the subject because I'm not, that's not my heart. My heart is that you don't let this sorrow and this fear consume you. Amen. That is consuming the world around you. Amen. We have peace that passes understanding. Amen. We have joy that's unspeakable. Amen. I think it's high time the world saw it. Amen. If there was ever a season where the church has the opportunity to shine, it's right now. And it... Shut up, Pastor. <laughs> we, we, need to, we, we need to do that. But listen, I don't know about you, but I found myself having to use these tools more and more as this thing has progressed. The longer we're in this situation, the more I've had to be aware of taking every thought captive, thinking on these things, uh, uh, returning the sorrow to cinder. Come on, are you with me? Mm -hmm. And listen, there, there's some here, listen, I, I remember what it was like when I, I need to be in church every time the doors open. And if you're that way, just know that I'm praying for you. If we're supposed to be having service, you're not alone. I promise you, me and the Holy Ghost is interceding for you. Amen. Thank you. And if the Lord leads me, I'll do some of us right now. I ain't have swim. We're not going to talk about all that. So, but I am praying for you. And my doors are open. But if you'll practice these things, you're going to start walking in a new level of joy. Amen. How many are ready for a new level of joy? Amen. How many like that joy you've been getting around here when the Holy Ghost floods in? Amen. Can you imagine showing them to work like that? Ah, <laughs> uh -huh. Woo! Glory! What is wrong with you? <laughs> I've been drinking with the Holy Ghost. Huh? You got something to say about that? Woo! Joy and peace. <laughs> What's up? Come over here. He gives to every man liberty to dance. Woo! Let's go. We just, we just, we uh, let's just do it. I know it sounds funny. But ain't that what the disciples did? Yeah. Ain't that what the apostle Paul went around giving? Peter and John walked up to the man and said, he was sitting there. He might as well have had COVID-19. He was ate up. And they said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give unto you. They didn't keep their social distancing, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and they were supposed to at that time, with, along with people that weren't sick, especially at the temple gates. Yeah. And they were rabbis. They weren't supposed to be that close, by the way, just in case you're one. Mm -hmm. 
But in order to give something, we have to have something. And if the, that is why the enemy has worked so hard during this time to steal your joy and peace and mess up your head. Because he doesn't want you to give anything you got to somebody else. So if nothing else, he keeps you wrapped up fighting a one-man battle. When God already did the whipping. Amen. He was defeated at Calvary. Remember, he made that show of him openly. So, let's recap. Where are we at? Jesus made a show of them openly. Oh my. I'm having a... <laughs> All right, he made a show. Too blessed by the best. The blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he had no... So, so listen, this is your starting format. When you wake up in the morning... The blessings of the Lord are making you rich, and He adds no sorrow. Amen. And you accept nothing less. Amen. I don't care if the car breaks down. I don't care if your, your boss is whatever. The blessing of the Lord make one rich and adds no sorrow to it. It may not be manifesting then, but if you stand in faith, there's not an if, and, or but about it. He is going to cause you to prosper in everything you lay your hand to. If you continue to keep your heart right, your head right, it's not if you're blessed, it's when you're blessed. Because he said, I will make you rich. Amen. I can remember looking back, listen, for some of you that just started, or been a little while, I still remember my first years. I thought, Lord, they all look like they got the Midas touch, and I'm over here struggling to keep my head above water. And I'm doing everything they're doing. And God, God was like, yeah, but you ain't letting it have the same effect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But as I've grown, I've gotten there. And guess what I have for people that are coming up? Something called mercy, because I still remember. I remember the thoughts that the enemy tried to fire, trying to bring me sorrow because he knew I was on my way to being rich in the things of God. And I have not arrived, man. There's men of God that's got it a hundred times better than me, but I believe I'm on the same train. Amen. But I can tell you, as a church and as a pastor, we started with nothing, and I'm doing pretty good right now. I'm not talking about physically. Listen, I want to set this up because people online just heard nothing but about money. I can look at people and where they started 10 years ago, and I can see them now when the whole world's upside down, and they are steady like a rock. They're blessed. They're not shaken. They have jobs. They're provided for. And they're walking in the blessings of God. That is what a successful church looks like. Amen. That is what changed lives look like, and that's what it means to be a pastor. Amen. When you can look at people and see they've came up. Amen. Amen? Amen? The peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Did it say it could? Did it say it might? It said it shall. So if you ain't got no peace, you're going to have to ask yourself what I've been thinking on. And I'm not here to beat on you because sometimes we all get thinking on the wrong stuff. Sometimes we get overwhelmed with information. And we need to learn to, when to know when to change the channel. Amen. I don't care if it's a person, place, or thing that's bringing it. Sometimes we need to know when to change the channel. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then we've got to know what to think on and then we've got to stir up the gifts. So this morning, I had a lot planned. But I just want to do what the Holy Ghost wants. And I already feel like God's like been moving majorly. How many felt think God's stirring stuff up in you all ago? Amen. And I want to encourage you this week to come back more stirred up next week than you are this week. Amen. And guess what? That starts. Starts something called revival. Amen. Amen. Let revival start it. In the midst of the worst times should be the times when God is shining the brightest. But it comes when people that have already been tried in the Word. Listen, there's some people just going through their first steps. Do you all remember them? Yeah. And right now they're going through it in the middle of COVID-19. I bet they could use some words of encouragement. Amen. I, bet they could, I bet they could use some words of faith. 
Do y'all remember your time when you went through something? You need somebody to speak life into you. Mm -hmm. And if you're there, I pray this morning that my words have spoke life into you. And you start, you sit up a little straighter, and you uh, breathe a little deeper, and you believe that God is who He says He was, He can do what He said He can do, and you just feel like you could go out and whip Satan and swing over hell a corn stalk and spit in the devil's eye. Why? Because it's the God in you. Amen. And if you start getting whipped on, I'll pray by the Holy Ghost, you remember Pastor Brian's definition of he made a show of him openly. Amen. I can just see Everybody, ringmaster, come on over there! <laughs> <Push. laughs> he just, Jesus just splatted him, you know. We'd see him climbing up on the top rope. Wah! <laughs> but I ain't talking about that fake wrestling either. <laughs> Bare knuckles. He didn't want no wimpy gloves. He whipped him good. That's why they don't want bare knuckles. They're going to cut something. <laughs> Jesus wasn't in it just to make... He wanted him done forever. Amen. 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 And if you believe he whipped him for... Listen, where does sickness come from? Satan. Where does death... Well, who, who still tries to bring dis, depression? All those things. Satan. Right. What is at the core of this thing? God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. Listen, right now, if you let fear come in, it robs your sound mind. I don't care how many different ways you can break it down and twist it and pervert the Word of God to be that's the bottom line. I'm not saying you shouldn't use wisdom. But don't let fear come in. And stir it up. When somebody, oh man, we've got, where's your mask at? Sometimes, maybe I'm just too logical. And I know there's times I should keep my mouth shut. I'm like, you really believe that cloth mask can do anything? I mean, when you do all the, listen, I am a scientific person. I've done all the stuff. There's absolutely nothing going to happen. It's not doing nothing but making you feel better. Right. Making the people around you feel better. Yeah. I probably shouldn't be saying this from the pool. Time is for another time for that. Lord forgive me. So, sorry for my jumping up on my thumb. Lord forgive me. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> see, i got to get my head right. <laughs> Holy Ghost, that's pretty good. See, just that quick, I can he, I had a thought, and boy, I started going down there. It didn't edify nobody. It didn't pray, bring peace or joy to nobody. So I need to take that thought captive, mm -hmm. like I did. Sometimes you let some stupid words out of your mouth, and you got to say, "How hey, I'm sorry for those stupid words." Can we change the subject? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Listen, that's what a real man and woman acts like—not somebody that's picture perfect, but somebody that realizes when they get off track and they change course. Right. Amen. It says the love of God constrains me. He didn't, you know, that means you. there's times that you want to do something stupid, but the love of God makes you not do it. Right. Amen. 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 So I want to encourage you this week. I really feel like God's already moved, but just, you know, and, and I, I, like in a, I want to do it again, but I feel like God's already done it. He's telling me they've already done it, so I'm going to leave it at that. But man, lay hands on yourself. <laughs> Stir up the joy. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Come on. Every time you start feeling your peace and your joy going, you need to start taking your thought captives, figuring out what you're thinking on, lay hands on yourself, and stir up the gifts of God that are within you. Amen. And expect something to happen. Amen. Some of you are like, but Pastor, that's gonna, they're going to look at me funny. <laughs> Blame me, I don't care. <laughs> Who cares? Do you want to be happy or depressed? Your choice. Happy, happy, happy. Happy, happy, happy. You know that saying out there that says, I'm too blessed by the best to be depressed. I'm not even going to be stressed. The enemy brings all those things, but what it means is I make a conscious choice to believe the Word of God and the promises of God over the junk that's being sent to me. Right. And listen, the enemy works in half truths. He'll usually bring something that has some truth to it, but it's one. But it's one hundred percent negative results when you when you drink it. 
Y'all with me? It's getting warm up here. <laughs> Woo! Glory. Uh, you know what? He's hot, Mom. I'm done. <laughs> Sister Becky, I'm gonna, I'm okay. gonna get you. See how you do up here. <laughs> Close us in prayer and take prayer requests. Listen. You're too blessed. The blessings of God, they make you rich. <coughs> There's no if, might, gonna be, someday. They do. And don't you ever forget it. Amen. Don't you ever let the enemy steal that from you. Because that is what he's coming after. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear me? Amen. <coughs> and when he shows up, I hear. I, I pray you hear my voice in your head say, knock that off. Get in the fight. Amen. Put that dude under your feet where he belongs. Listen, it said also on the day that Jesus crushed Satan under his heel. Mm -hmm. Crushed the snake. We ain't got to stomp him again. He's already dead. Mm -hmm. we, all, we don't have to get authority over him. We've already got it. Amen. He just wants you to convince him. He's just trying to convince you he's bigger than what he said.